Well, Mr. Ebert, thank you again, sir, for uh, coming on the program today. I know it's uh, probably been a very, a very busy one for you. It's not what I envisioned when I woke up this morning, that's for certain. <laughs> Uh, listen, uh, for those who are unaware, uh, your your name and uh, your store in uh, Clean Texas, uh, 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 you know, really became part of the uh, the news story today uh, when it was revealed that uh, the individual uh, uh, Nasser Abdo, who is now in custody, uh, came into your store and, and and bought some items, and one of your clerks actually uh, alerted law enforcement and really tipped off law enforcement. This guy was planning on doing some harm. Well, oddly enough, that was me. That was you. <laughs> yes. All right. So, so, so. If, I mean, if you can tell us, I mean, what, what made you suspicious? Well, uh, let me give you a little background. Just sure. So you can see where I'm coming from. I'm not the owner. I just work there. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm a part-time guy. Uh, I've known the owner for 20 years. And uh, I recently retired from the Colleen Police Department, so I'm a, I'm a retired police officer. Okay. And what roused my suspicion is uh, to 40 years of police work and watching people. And just a, a couple things that this kid did just made me uneasy. Do, do you mind uh, me asking what exactly? Well, we're, we're talking about Tuesday afternoon, about 1 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the local taxi services, uh, their vehicle pulls into the parking lot. Now, the reason we know this is we have a, a fairly good uh, video system, which also covers the exterior parking area. Okay. So we see this taxi pull in. We don't see a lot of taxis come to the shop. As a matter of fact, you almost never see them. So the mere presence of the taxi kind of arouses our curiosity. Uh, The driver exits the vehicle. He lights up the smoke, and he's kind of milling around, and someone in the vehicle exits and walks towards the front door. We don't think anything more of it than somebody's going to come in and perhaps make a purchase. Mm -hmm. Uh, A youngster enters a store, white male, uh, early to to mid-20s perhaps, He's, he's not real talkative. You know, you, you give the standard greeting. Good yeah. morning, good afternoon. Is there anything we can do to help you? And he's basically, he doesn't say anything. He just goes about, uh, you know, browsing the, the contents of the store. Uh, maybe five minutes into the store, he stops in an area where we display uh, powders, uh, smokeless powders for reloading. And uh, over the next few minutes, he selects six canisters of smokeless powder, brings it over to uh, the register area, and asks the manager, what is smokeless powder? Well, to me, that's a red flag. (laughs) When do you pick up six of them? Yeah. Yeah, you got six pounds of smokeless powder, and you're asking me what it is. Yeah. Uh, that, That tells me that you probably don't know what you're doing. And, you know, are you sure this is what you want? Mm -hmm. Uh, We leave it at that. I mean, this is what you want to buy. I'm going to sell it to you. Because at that point, the guy, he hasn't done anything unlawful. Right. Nor is he he involved in anything illegal that we're aware of. So I really have no reason not to sell it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, and, and I'm sure you've been there before. You get that feeling in the pit of your stomach that something just isn't right. Oh, yeah. And that's where I was at. So, so he, he asked a couple other questions. He asked me about a spare magazine or an extra magazine for a Springfield XD semi-automatic pistol. Uh, I told him, yeah, I've got that. Uh, I went and checked, and I, I had one. He says, well, if you got one, I'll take two. And I looked, and I told him, says, hey, this is it. And I got, I've only got one. If, if you want it, you're more than welcome to it. So he takes that. He asked me about uh, some 40 Smith & Wesson ammunition, and I told him where it was at. And he says, well, give me a box. And I'm trying to explain to him that different manufacturers, you know, different bullet weights, what do you want? Mm-hmm. He said, well, just give me a box. And at this point, I'm getting frustrated. So I told him, since here's the ammunition, how about you select something that you're comfortable with? Yeah. Well, he goes over, he stands there for a few minutes, and he basically blows off the handgun ammunition and ends up buying three boxes of shotgun shells. Another red flag. 
Well, uh, kind of. Yeah. You know? It just, his behavior is odd. Yeah. He, he's, he wears sunglasses the whole time he's in there. He never takes them off. Uh, he's not really conversant. He, he's, he's kind of aloof. But he's not done anything. I mean, there's really no reason for me to deny a sale to this character. Right. So the moral of the story is he's got six pounds of powder, three boxes of 12-gauge shotgun shells, and this, this extra magazine. And uh, he comes to the counter, and I told him, is that going to take care of you this afternoon? He says, yep. So I ring it up. It, it comes to, it's just shy of $250. And he produces a, a handful of cash, you know, deals out, uh, I guess it was two and a half. I ring it up, and in the process of doing that, he takes his bag and just walks out. He doesn't wait for his change or the receipt. Another red flag. So, you know, I, 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 Kathy, the manager, you know, tells him, you know, thank you for your patronage. Have a great day. And he makes some offhand comment about, though, I hope your day's better than mine's going to be. Something, something along those lines. Okay. He goes outside, gets in the cab, cab backs out, pulls out of the, the business and is gone. So Kathy and I spend a few minutes and, and we talk about what's transpired. And it, it's a couple hours pass by, and we finally get to a consensus that, you know, I'm just not comfortable with, with this guy's behavior and what he's bought. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're getting close to, to closing time, so we went ahead and closed up the store. And I told her, if it'll make you feel better, I'll, I'll give one of the guys at the PD a call and just brief them. At least that way they know. Yeah what's transpired this afternoon. So if something does happen, uh, they're going to be aware of it. So I called one of the lieutenants I used to work with, and I briefed him, and he, and he thanked me, and he says, well, we'll look into it, and I'll get back with you. Uh, Wednesday evening, uh, the same lieutenant called me back and said, hey, man, great information. We made an arrest. But that was the extent of our conversation. Okay. I didn't get into any particulars. Uh, as a matter of fact, the information I gave them was was pretty Spartan to begin with. Yeah. So, you know, the success of, of finding this guy and taking a potential threat to the community off the street rests squarely on the shoulders of the police. They did a magnificent job. Absolutely. But so, and, and that's basically it. I mean, I'm, you know, people keep telling me I'm a hero. I'm not a hero. I'm just an average Joe that did what he thought was the right thing. Well, you know, I, 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 in that respect, uh, Greg, you can you can believe what you want, but let me tell you, uh, I think that there are a lot of people out there who who maybe sometimes ignore that 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 little voice in the back of their head or that that feeling in their gut, uh, and, and don't make that call. So I, I think uh, you doing what you thought was right. Uh, you know, we we can debate over whether or not we want to call it heroic, but listen, I, I'm I'm certainly glad you did it. Well, we're, you know, as, as a collective body uh, of, of business people, we are delighted that uh, the police were able to locate this kid and prevent the, a potential catastrophe from taking place. I, I feel very positive about it, but I, I just, and, and the people I've spoken to, I've tried to place that emphasis there. I hope that uh, when, when this you know, is brought to a conclusion mm-hmm. that the police department uh, is is recognized uh, and provided the kudos they deserve for just a, an extraordinarily good investigation. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Greg, I I, uh, I, I hate to ask you this question, but uh, <laughs> we know uh, that there are going to be folks who are going to try to want to make political hay out of this. Of course. Uh, so let me go ahead and ask you: Do you think that there is additional legislation that uh, you could pass? Uh, that would have, I don't know, changed the outcome? Should we have a law that uh, demands anytime someone buys more than a pound of smokeless powder, you've got to call the ATF right away? I, I think you probably already know the, the answer to the question. Uh, there are enough laws on the books now that we can hardly keep up. Uh, I can require identification from everybody that comes in there can you tell me that by doing that, that you will guarantee that they will not do something bad? Mm-hmm. And my response to you was, of course you can't. 
Yeah. Anybody who, and the analogy I would use is this. I do everything humanly possible to protect my home. I put in, you know, video recording device. I put, uh, you know, high security locks, exterior lighting. I go to all these extremes. The bottom line is if somebody wants inside this home, they're going to find a way. Well, the same thing holds true with people who have bad intentions. Uh, You may delay them to some degree. But in the end, if they are determined enough to do something bad, they're going to find a way. Yeah. So w- would additional legislation prevent something like this? Uh, one person expressing their personal opinion, I would say no, absolutely not. Yeah. But again, you know, uh, uh, doing exactly what you did, paying attention to uh, the, the folks, uh, you know, in, in your store, when something doesn't uh, feel right, talking about it with uh, your coworkers, making that call, you know what, folks doing that, do folks doing the right thing can stop bad people. Well, I, I, I am convinced, and, and I have a slight bias because I am a retired peace officer, but I've, I used to lecture the, the young men and women that work for me repeatedly that community involvement does nothing more then enhance the department's ability to suppress crime and prevent a lot of bad things from happening. The more involved people are, the safer your community is going to be. It's just that simple. Uh, And you're as aware as I, uh, especially in today's environment, uh, how many times have you heard the expression, well, I didn't want to get involved? Oh, yeah. You know, bullshit. And excuse my French. That's all right. But it, it just it's nonsensical to think that you can stick your head in the sand and everything will just pass you by. It won't. Because people with bad intentions, when when you allow people to do bad and there's there's no reprisal or, or people are not held to be accountable, you're basically sending them the signal that it's okay to behave like this. And it's not. Greg, it has been such a, uh, a pleasure talking to you tonight and an honor. I want to thank you for coming on this program. Uh, thank you for everything that you do, and I hope that we have the, the uh, opportunity to talk again in the future. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and thank you for letting have me my say. Absolutely. Greg Ebert uh, joins us from Guns Galore uh, here on Cam & Company.